Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me, and welcome to your June monthly readings for each and every zodiac sign, yeah? Um, if you've been following me for some time, you know that I use, I was doing readings bi-monthly for the zodiac signs, but that has become too taxing, okay? It's a lot, a lot of work, and I have a lot going on um, in life, so I have to really pull it back a little bit. So instead of doing bi-monthlies, I'm just going to do it once a month for each zodiac sign. However, I am adding some extra oracle guidance into the readings. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for some time now. I'm really, really excited to bring this to you guys. For this month, I will be pulling, I will be using, um, you know, the traditional Tarot deck. I have the Arcanum deck that I'm using this month. But then for Oracle Guidance, I'm going to be pulling Action Oracle Guidance from the Oracle of the Unicorns by Cordelia Francesca Brobs. I love this deck because mainly I love, I just love unicorns. And then we have um, Spiritual Guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck by Alana Fairchild, okay? I'm, I'm really so happy to be doing it this way. Um, I actually wanted to add Oracle Guidance into it for some time now, but because it was bi-monthly and it was so much work to begin with, I didn't want to make the readings longer um, and take more time than I had to. But now because I'm doing this, you know, once a month, I'm definitely going to be keeping this Oracle Guidance in. I may switch it up. I think I am going to stick with the Crystal Mandala Oracle for spiritual guidance, but I may change over when it comes to action, uh, physical guidance from the oracles. Okay, I am available for private readings. Um, all of the information for that is in the description box below. So if anything resonates with you and you want to get a deeper understanding of it, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can email me and we can chat a little bit and I can schedule you and all and everything like that. Um, payments are through PayPal. I will send you a uh, an invoice from PayPal and we can do that. As soon as payment is secure, I will be able to uh, schedule your reading officially. Um, and just in case anyone was wondering if you are in the New York City area or you will be in the New York City area anytime soon, I am still doing readings at Om Shanti Bookstore. I'm sorry, bookshop in um, Manhattan on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. The website is in the description box below. Um, if you do want to get a reading with me there, I highly recommend that you call ahead of time and schedule the reading. I am there every Monday from 11 to 5. Um, scheduling it that way will ensure that you get your reading um, at the time that you want. Otherwise, if you walk in, you know there's a risk that I may not be available at that moment or whatever, okay? Please keep in mind, guys, that these are general readings, all right? So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. And please do not try to fit something in where you know it doesn't belong, okay? If something doesn't resonate with you, just let it go. Um, and also, if you know you're in the reading and you're getting in there and it does, it's not really resonating with you and you've been watching it for a few moments and it's still not resonating with you, just move forward. I do encourage you guys to check out not only your sun sign, but your moon, your rising, and your Venus, okay? Your sun sign um, is, you know, it is like the main thing, sure, but then watching your moon and your rising, at least, can help you get more information. And like, if you don't resonate with your sun sign, then you might resonate with your moon and rising. And then also, if you're looking for love guidance, I would highly recommend that you check out your Venus sign, okay? You could not, you may not resonate with any of them except for one, you know? So like, just check it out, see how you feel and see what resonates. And I believe that's all, yeah. So without further ado, let's get into the readings. Hey Taurus, welcome to your reading for the month of June. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am very, very excited to be getting back into this for all of us. So let's just get straight into it, yeah? All right, Spirit, please make me a clear channel for all Taurans, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages for Taurus for the month of June 2018. Okay. So, Taurus fam, what do we have going on this month? Now, I am seeing some green energy. That could just be me tapping into, you know, this earth element of Taurus. 
Um, but it also does mean some healing. There's a, there's a good amount of healing going on right now. So that's, that's really a good thing here. Okay. Let's see what we have in the cards for us. For June 2018. Starting off with the Two of Swords in reverse. Um, oh, I just saw 111 on the counter. Uh, n not being indecisive anymore. Like, not being in this stuck, stagnant energy of what do I do? What do I do? I, 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 I don't know what to do. What do I do? What? No. No, you're done with that. You know what to do now. Even if you don't completely know where you're going or how exactly you're going to get there, ultimately there is an energy of, like, not not worrying about it anymore, just moving forward in a direction that feels much better than where you were um, in the past, yeah? I've been seeing 44 everywhere, guys, and I literally just saw 144 on the counter. Lord have mercy. We have the, <laughs> we have the King of Wands in reverse. Um, this could be, you could be dealing with an, a fire sign, uh, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, um, or you could be someone, you could have been dealing with someone that is very charismatic, um, but kind of a player. Um, what I'm picking up here with the King of Wands is this is a release of this person, of this type of energy, of this type of person. You could be personally releasing, um, this energy yourself, uh, just being very egotistical and going for, going after things, um, because it's what you want and not really caring about how others are affected by it. Or you could be releasing a person that, um, that embodied that kind of energy. Very egotistical, extremely selfish, a player not even really willing to, you know, even think about how things affect others, you know, just really all about themselves. Okay. Next we have, oh man. <laughs> Oh boy, we have the Four of Wands. And this is a bit significant, um, especially since I just saw 144 on the counter. 144 is a big twin flame number recently. It's There are some people that say that there's 144,000 individuals um, within the Twin Flame Collective that are meant to actually come into union while others are not. Um, and there are others, other people that are saying that 144 is literally just uh, energetic resonance. Um, is an energetic frequency. I'm not really sure. All I know is I've been seeing 144 and 44 specifically frequently lately. And now we have the Four of Wands, which is a twin flame card, or it can be depicted as a twin flame card, um, it, more specifically twin flame union. And um, uh, mostly because, you know, you have the 1111 here. But other than that, outside of that whole situation, we have foundations. We have happy and good and solid foundations, okay? Now, there could be, in seeing this card, now I'm seeing a different, holy shit, okay. <laughs> in seeing this card now, I'm seeing a little bit of a different de different depiction in what's going on here. I just wanted to center that a little bit. Um, a different depiction in what's going on here with the Two of Swords and the King of Wands in reverse. Yes, you could be releasing someone from your life um, that, that was exhibiting this, uh, negatively aspected King of Wands energy that you have been up in arms about whether or not you want to walk away from this situation or not. Don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, and now <clears throat> you have finally walked away and now that you have finally walked away and, and I don't mean just in a physical sense, I mean in an energetic sense for the mostly, because really all of our physical manifestations start in the energetic realms first. So when you energetically walk away, you take the blindfold off, you say, no, this is not something I want in my life. And I'm going to walk away from this situation, regardless of whether or not I actually get you back. Now that you've actually done that, the space has been cleared for foundations to be put into place, either with this person that you walked away from, because you energetically separating from them has given them uh, some sort of epiphany, some sort of aha moment and showed them the error of their ways and showed them how manipulative they've been being. And now that has influenced them to change their ways. And so now a better foundation can be put into place or you have cleared the energy away for someone else to come into your life. 
<laughs> for someone else to come into your life so that this real foundation in the four, that the Four of Wands talks about, this real happy and beneficial and loving and positive and light-filled foundation to be put into place. And you want to know why I'm saying that? 55 on 55 on the counter. There are some big changes happening. And I'm saying that because underneath everything, we've got the Two of Cups. Okay? This is definitely talking about relationships. Now, it could go one of two ways. It could be the relationship and foundation with somebody else, whether that is this person that you've energetically separated from or someone new that could be coming into your life, or this could be talking about the foundation and balance within yourself. Because in choosing to not be indecisive anymore and not be worried about losing this person that you've been attached to for so long, in choosing to separate, to reject any sort of manipulative energy from your environment, now you have become closer to a sort of union with yourself. Yes, not a sort of union, a union come into come more uh, uh, to more a, a more solid union within yourself okay and even if this other person that you have been dealing with for so long got the message and is now taking steps to change their environment to change how they approach the situation that is still influenced by you building or uh, accepting this greater union within yourself because let me tell you if you've been dealing with someone who has been manipulating you, for X amount of time and they've come to the understanding that they can do whatever the fuck they want and then they'll they, and they'll ghost on you and then come back in and, and, and tell you or give you the right signals or tell you the right things to get you to open back up again and then the cycle just create recreates itself. If you have been the one that has said, uh-uh, put the put the kibosh on that, and then they come back around trying to play the same old game and they see that your energy has changed, Lord honey, that was a wake-up call. Regardless of whether you take them back or not, that was a wake up call for them. And that's all because what this Two of Cups is also saying is you exhibited way more self respect than you ever have in the past. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Moving forward, we have the Knight of Swords in reverse with the Nine of Wands. Interesting. So. The Knight of Swords in reverse is talking about what I'm seeing, really, really what I'm seeing in the Knight of Swords in reverse and the Nine of Wands is, is somebody, either you, Taurus, or someone else in your environment, but I am picking up for the most part, it's you, Taurus. Um, you're kind of defending yourself against this Knight of Swords. And I feel what I really feel like is going on here is you're releasing this this fighting energy, this um, kind of destructive energy, um, and you're kind of separating yourself from the situation and defending yourself. And instead of okay, here it is. Instead of moving forward with the attack, you are now on the defensive um, because you're battered and bruised. And it's not even like you really want to be in the defensive. You just understand that there's still some of this Knight of Swords energy around you, and you're just trying to fend it off as much as you can. You're not really fighting back anymore, but you're still in the battle, okay? Yeah. You're really just, and this is, and, and yeah, this defensive mode is more along the lines of Seven of Wands, but that's why I'm saying you're in defensive mode, but you're still... But, but you're still in the battle. Like, you're not really fighting back. This could be, like, if you've been, if there have been, in this relationship that we've been talking about here, um, if you've been having to feel, feeling like you've had to defend yourself in this situation against people that are trying to, that are putting their opinions in the situation and trying to put the kibosh on it to destroy it, you come to a position where you are not going to fight them anymore and you realize that they could be coming at you still trying to, to, to manipulate things, but you're on the defensive in the sense that you're not even allowing them to penetrate your armor. You're just, you're literally just not fighting back. You're standing up for yourself. Don't get me wrong, but it's not even like you're standing up for yourself and you're trying to prove your point. No, you're just trying to, you're just, you're just blocking their energy. 
so that they cannot manipulate you or the situation anymore. And that's why it's coming up as the nine of wands, because that's why you're still, you still are, or at least you feel like you're still in this battle. Okay. Moving on. But my attention keeps coming to the four of wands. So I'm, I'm being guided to remind you that in you taking this position here with the knight of swords in reverse and the nine of wands, you are enacting or you are putting this foundation into place because you have the self-respect to know what it is is true for you regardless of what anyone else wants to throw at you okay moving forward we have the six of cups in reverse and we've got 11 11 on the counter okay six of cups in reverse with the two of wands in reverse so wow um the Six of Cups in reverse is saying right now, for me, it's saying, to me at least, it's saying there could have been a, um, well, okay, you're not getting ca caught up in the past anymore. You're not getting caught up in um, reminiscing, in nostalgia. Um, and I feel like, 1144, geez, guys, <laughs> uh, I, I feel like there was an energy of, there was a connection with someone that you felt a very deep soul connection with. Um, that had you caught up, that had you indecisive, that had you not making a decision as to moving forward romantically, okay? And you're releasing that. Um, this also could be you releasing childhood wounds that kept you kind of stuck in trying to figure out what to do. Now, this, this definitely could be um, an attachment to toxicity, Okay, this definitely could be what also the uh, two of swords was talking about, about not being indecisive. And then I think and I definitely think that actually the two of wands and the two of swords are interconnected here because the reason why you were in that two of swords state was because whomever or whatever you were dealing with is in fact a deep soulmate connection. It was passionate. It was fiery. And it was something you didn't want to let go of because you did not want to lose this connection. But what you were failing to understand or realize was that you needed to, in fact, release this connection for this four of wands or for this beneficial and positive stability and foundation to be put into place. Because by holding on to it in the way that you were, you were just keeping these negative cycles, these past life experiences, these past life, past life karmic cycles in play. But now that you've released it, the karmic cycles are gone and you can rebuild either with this person again, if they come back or if they're meant for you or with someone else who is better suited. Yeah. Moving forward, we have the world. See, look, the cycles are ending and the world is upright, guys. So the cycles are literally coming to an end. And I feel so much relief for, for you guys. Whoever I'm connecting with, I really feel so much relief in that world card because I feel like these cycles have been years long, if not lifetimes long, even if, if not decades long, okay? The world is coupled with, oh yeah, the star upright, all right? So the cycles are coming to an end, healing is coming into play, and wish fulfillment is on its way, okay? The advice here is to continue Continue following this star that has inspired you, that has allowed you to lay down this Two of Swords energy and just move forward with your life. Continue to follow that star. Even though I'm well aware you don't necessarily know where you're going, you just know that there's this tiny little light that just feels amazing to you, like best feeling you've ever felt in your life, you have no idea where it's leading to. But trust me, it is not going to lead you anywhere else than fit wish fulfillment, regardless of what it may look like on the surface. Because remember, these cycles of toxicity are ending. And firm, beneficial, positive foundations are being put into place, Taurus. Next, we have the Four of Cups, and it's upright, with the Hier Hierophant. Taurus, this is your card, okay? Um, what I'm picking up here is there was, uh, 
I mean, the first thing I thought of was uncon was uh, was not unconditional love was um, unrequited love. Um, someone sent an offer that was rejected. Um, wow, this is a really interesting message. Give me a second. I'm just I'm just channeling the energy, seeing what comes up here, because the hierophant is you, Taurus. Okay, this is your card, um, and in reverse. I just feel like you're releasing convention or someone around you is releasing convention. I feel like someone around you, like maybe you Taurus, you sent a message to them. Um, like you, you reached out to them. Um, but it, but the circumstances under this, under which this offer was given to this other person was unconventional and they didn't like that or they weren't willing to accept that. They wanted to keep things very much conventional, very much in line with society very much um, surface level. They didn't want to really go down deep. They were not listening to their inner selves, their higher selves. They were not listening to their hearts. And so they rejected this offer. This could be you or this could be someone else, Taurus. Or Taurus, you could have not been listening to yourself and not following your guidance and either reaching out to someone that was not right for you or not reaching out to someone that was not right for you. Like what I'm actually, actually what I'm seeing right now in going down that path, I'm seeing you Taurus or someone else actually in Taurus. And this is uh, someone else uh, associated with you Taurus. And actually I did touch on this uh, just a moment ago, but I'm also seeing more on a, on a deeper level. I'm seeing that someone was not listening to their inner selves, their heart, their higher selves. They were really just caught up in the dogma of 3D patriarchal society and was not accepting a true love offer that was coming towards them. And they may not necessarily have realized it. And that's could be, that could definitely be where the, um, the uh, influence of society or patriarchy came into play because all of a sudden this offer was coming at them that seemed extremely passionate and blah, blah, blah. But, but society, the societal mind stepped in and said, oh no, there is no way that could work. I don't even know this person. I don't know this person from Adam or Eve. There is no way that's going to work. So I'm just going to ignore that. But now there has been a situation, there's some, been some sort of circumstance, maybe Taurus through you energetically separating or them energetically separating from you. Now the energy has been cleared, um, clarity has come into play, and now they see that actually this offer that came to them is or was legit. Okay, moving forward, we have ah, the magician in reverse with... The Ace of Wands in reverse. I, I'm really seeing a release of toxicity, of manipulative energy. Um, I'm also seeing a release of a certain circumstance or a certain situation or something that you were trying to manifest that was super passionate in the beginning, but now has turned toxic. And there's a release of that energy. Either this is with you, Taurus, or this is with someone surrounding you. Maybe you, Taurus, were the toxic one, were the, the manipulative one, and you were trying to start something with someone else, and you didn't have the best intentions, and now that is being released from your energy. Um, or you were trying to start something with someone else who was in a toxic state, and now you realize that that's not going to fly, Taurus, so you have released that energy. Either way, what I'm seeing here is that the release of this magician, this manipulative magician energy, and the Ace of Wands in reverse, some, side of, some sort of offer or inspiration or new start that was sure was passionate, but in this case, it was lustful. It was really just, um, it was really just rooted in and lustful desire and not even like design divine desire where like this is a this is a soulmate partner this is like a divine partnership no this was just like some sort of karmic bullshit i just want to i just want to you know wham bam thank you ma'am and then i'm a ghost on you either way this energy is being released and my attention is again being drawn to the four of wands which is saying in this energy being released new foundation can come in okay and that just could be, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's someone else coming into play, especially with this Two of Cups energy that's on the bottom of the deck right now. That could just be you you balancing out and laying better foundation for yourself personally so that you can move forward in a much more beneficial way, okay? Next, we have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse with ah, the Six of Wands in reverse. Um, there is an energy here. <laughs> there is an energy here of someone feels like they missed 
out big time. And it's because they feel like, or they've come to the, to the realization that they just moved too damn slow. Like slow and steady does win the race. Sure. But in this case, the energy that I'm feeling here for this situation, slow and steady was way too damn slow. But what I'm also picking up with the six of wands here in reverse is that there's still a victory. It just is not what it seems. Like I'm picking up kind of like the sun in reverse situation in the sense that, you know, they, it's just, or maybe even like a moon, the moon in reverse, whatever, whatever. I'm picking up energies of something is not necessarily as it seems, okay? Um, but ultimately, the biggest thing I'm picking up on is someone feels like they really missed out. And that could be because... Yeah, they were moving way too damn slow. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't take things slow. I'm not saying that. But there comes a point where you got to make a decision. And that's what the Two of Swords energy was saying. So for you, Taurus, or whoever's cross-watching, if you decided, if you really took the initiative and said, fuck this, I am not going to sit in this rock between a, hard place, uh, between a rock and a hard place situation. I am not going to allow myself to be indecisive anymore and just to hold myself back um, and try every single thing that I could possibly try to make sure I'm making the right decision and moving away or moving forward. F that. I'm making a decision now. And because of that, you have someone that's feeling remorse. And I feel like that remorse is coming. Now, this is not Five of Cups energy, but this is Six of Wands energy. And it's because... Because ultimately, this is for whomever is feeling this, like they feel like they missed out, it is illuminating things for them. It's showing them that they need to step up. If this is what they truly want, they have to step up. Twenty, I saw 22, 22 on the counter. They have to step up. And it's, this is coming up as the Six of Wands energy because it's being illuminated to them that they have to stop moving so slow and they have to start making decisions. And it's illuminating that the fact that them moving so slow really just made things even worse. But it's also Six of Wands energy because this is saying to me that this is not that the, just because someone else has energetically separated, it doesn't necessarily mean that all is lost. That is why it's not Five of Cups energy. It's Six of Wands in reverse. Because ultimately, this is just showing someone that they need to step their game up, that they need to change their approach, that they need to start making decisive actions towards something if they truly want it in their lives. This could be you, Taurus, or this could be someone that is cross-watching for a Taurus. All right, moving forward, we have the Eight of Cups in reverse with... The Ten of Pentacles. So, something has been released. Okay? Someone is in, in the process of releasing things or walking away from things that no longer serve them. This is not necessarily... Okay, well, it could be a blockage, but it's not, I'm not, for the most part, I'm really not picking up a blockage. I'm picking up someone is actually in the process of moving away from this Eight of Cups energy. And it could even be that they're in the process of it because, and this actually could be where the blockage or resistance is, I'm being told there could be uh, resistance or blockage in this Eight of Cups energy. It could be just someone really thinking hard about what they need to walk away from, trying to figure out what it exactly is that needs to be released, needs to be walked away from in order to reach this Ten of Pentacles, this ultimate material fulfillment, okay? That's what I'm really picking up here for the most part with the Eight of Cups in reverse. Someone is now in the process, and this could very well be this person that feels like they were they, that they missed out, okay? Um, and I am picking up some Knight of Pentacles energy in the sense that they are still somewhat embodying this Knight of Pentacles energy because ultimately, and this is why I say slow and steady wins the race, it, it can be a good thing, but there is a fine line between that and just being stagnant. So I'm not saying that this person that feels like they missed out is completely rejecting Knight of Pentacles energy. Energy, No. For the most part, they're still embodying it, but they're changing up the game. They're changing the way they approach this slow and steady wins the race. Instead of just being somewhat stagnant and just being like, yeah, whatever. I mean, if it's really meant for me, it'll be around, blah, blah, blah. I really don't have to take that much action. I really don't have to do that much to keep this situation. No, no, no. 
Now they are in the Knight of Pentacles energy of, holy shit, I've got to take action. What is it that I need to release out of my life so that this Ten of Pentacles can really manifest? Because as you can see here, the Ten of Pentacles is upright. So this is saying to me that someone has ultimate material fulfillment and family life on their mind. And they are working towards uh, walking away from something that is no longer serving them, some sort of toxic energy that is holding them away from really, tr truly receiving this true Ten of Pentacles for them and taking action steps, trying to figure out what they need to do to bring this back into their lives, to really have this four of wands, solid, stable, um, a stability foundation. Yeah. Finally, in the storyline for us, Taurus, we have the King of Cups in reverse with the Queen of Wands in reverse. My, my, my. Give me a second here. <laughs> All right. I'm picking up sadness and rejection. I'm picking up there's a masculine energy around that realizes that the person they saw as the Queen of Wands has energetically rejected them. Is not standing up for manipula emotional man manipulation anymore. I'm really feeling a lot of remorse from someone who was, <laughs> who absolutely was not only the King of Wands in reverse, but the King of Cups in reverse. Like King of Wands in reverse are like f super fiery and passionate and attractive and charismatic and manipulative, but then the King of Cups in reverse came to, this is someone that was playing with people's hearts and emotions to get exactly what they wanted from them. And now, at some point in their history, they came into contact with someone that absolutely was that queen. Oh, look, and we have the counterparts too, the King and the Queen of Wands. Um, but they came into contact with someone that literally told, turned their whole worlds around. And this person that is represented by the king, uh, the kings of cups and wands, the king of cups and wands, um, still continued to play that manipulative game. And the queen of wands stood for it for some time because she was kind of blinded to it. But now she's not blinded to it anymore. And please understand, this is just energy. This is not gender specific, okay? But this queen of wands is not blinded to this anymore. Like she, she took that blindfold off herself. She said, enough with this. What is really going on around here? She saw the truth and she dipped. She was like, fuck that. Because she realized that attracting people like this into her life was a cycle. And she is putting an end. She's putting a kibosh to that cycle. And she's walking away. But what I want to point out here is this Queen of Wands is very much staring at that King of Cups like... Really, buddy? It takes me walking away from you on an energetic level for you to, to see something else. And now that and that King of Cups is looking away, in reverse is looking away like I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> and the Queen of Wands is still, she's still got that that smug, I'll say it, that smug look on her face. And she was like, Yeah, I'm, of course you don't. Bye, Felicia. I really don't know where that came from. But that was something. But honestly, I really feel like this person that is, in, that is represented by the King of Cups and the King of Wands is really leaving this energy behind. Because in truth, now if we're talking, if you're resonating with the Twin Flame label still, I want you to understand that the Queen of, Cup, the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands are looking right at each other. Okay, and they are, and the king of the king and the queen of wands are depictions of the divine masculine and the divine feminine in the minor arcana. And the only reason I'm really bringing up twin flame situations is because we've got the two of cups and we've got the four of wands. Okay, the four of wands is an eleven eleven card, is a union card. The two of cups is a soulmate relationship card. We also have the six of cups. Now. The King of Wands and the Queen of Wands are looking directly at each other. And the Queen of Wands is standing behind this King of Cups, who is also looking at that King of Wands. And it's like the Queen of Wands energy is illuminating this manipulative, emotionally manipulative energy coming from the King of Cups in reverse. So she's like, in essence, standing behind this King of Cups in reverse energy, illuminating things 
And the King of Wands is looking back on it like, holy shit. Is that really what I just did? And the Queen of Wands is behind him and is like, is behind the King of Cups and is like, yep, sure did, buddy. But the reason why the Queen of Wands is reversed is because she is energetically dipping out. And the reason why she's standing behind this King of Cups energy is because she's illuminating this for this person and saying, until you get this cleaned up, I'm out of here. Because I do not deserve, oh, sorry guys, I do not deserve to be treated this way, manipulated this way. I wasn't trying to manipulate you. I really was not trying, I in no way was trying to manipulate you. And I know, I don't know where this is coming from guys, but I'm just channeling the energy so I'm letting it out. I know you thought I was. I know you thought I was trying to come up in here, change your life, destroy everything you built because like what? I don't know. I wanted it for myself or some shit. No, bro. Meanwhile, the whole time you were the one being the manipulator because you wanted what you wanted and you were going to get it no matter who you fucked over in the process. So with this Two of Swords in reverse and this Queen of Wands in reverse and the World card and the Star, Homegirl dipped. And she left this illumination behind her that is showing whoever is represented by the King of Wands just what the King of Cups in reverse was after and was doing. <laughs> wow, guys. That was really intense. So there you have it. So let's get into some action oracle guidance from the Oracle of the Unicorns, yeah? Oops. I'm gonna do this one. There's, there's more space. All right. So, some action oracle for Taurus for the month of June. Well, I call it action oracle. I use I like to use the oracle of the unicorns for action steps, but it's actually the oracle of the unicorn step. Yeah, okay. I don't know why I felt like I had to clear that up. We have delight. Count your blessings and enjoy life. Take pleasure in simple things. Always expect the best. All right. So either for you, Taurus, if you're the one that has has released indecision and is moving on, or if you're cross watching for a Taurus um, and you're moving on from this Tauren or this Tauren is moving on from you, understand that all is not lost. And it's time for you to start really connecting with what you truly all the blessings that you truly have in your life. OK, count your blessings and enjoy life. Take pleasure in simple things. Always expect the best. So even if it looks like this person is really walking away from you and you're now starting to feel the energies of fear of never having, never seeing them again, um, them never accepting you again, of um, never having this kind of connection again, Delight and the Four of Wands are saying, just be grateful, okay? Expect the best, but release attachment to how that best comes forward for you, all right? Okay, and so from the Crystal Mandala deck, we're gonna get some spiritual guidance here. One more shuffle. I do really like seeing the Two of Cups here. Um, because to me, this is saying that, especially with the Four of Wands and even the Six of Cups, even though it's in reverse, there is a deep soulmate relationship here. I really feel like this is not the end for some of us that are really like connecting with this right now and are maybe feeling a little fearful, um, that this, this connection is never going to work. I really feel like what this Two of Cups is saying to me, and my ear is ringing now. Um, what this Two of Cups is saying to me is that the best thing that someone could have done was just energetically separate as much as you possibly could. And God, my heart is just like so illuminated when I say that. But 
All right, so uh, spiritual guidance for Taurus for the month of June, please. Whoa, this one, okay. Aha, Ascended Master El Moira and Blue Star Sapphire, higher will. All right, so um, understand that those are that, that those are in the position of separating. Please don't be afraid, because ultimately this is this is divinely guided, and this is absolutely why I feel like this does not mean it's the end for this connection, because ultimately there is higher will at play, and by you separating your energy, you have now really created the space for the divine to step in and start rearranging things for the highest good of everyone involved. Not necessarily just the sake of this connection, but just for the sake of the individuals involved. Because I do feel like there's a lot of toxicity here. Um, that's not necessarily anyone's initial fault, you know? A lot of that tox uh, attachment to toxicity comes from things that we learn in life. But I'm going to read the beginning of this for you. We bring you the blessings of higher will. There is a great plan of divine love unfolding throughout the universe, and the fulfillment of your divine destiny is included. Sometimes it may seem hard to trust in higher will. Yet, if you do, it can bring a feeling of great relief that you don't have to have all the answers or be in control for everything to still work out beautifully in your world. Surrender, a surrender empowers you to get on with life and trust that all is happening exactly as it should according to a greater intelligence and love. Sometimes, however, the mind wants to control the higher plan. It wants to decide when something should happen and how and with whom and in what way. It might convince itself that this personal opinion is actually the higher plan itself and then feel betrayed, frightened, or confused when things, quote, don't go according to plan. The mind can be a great ally on the spiritual path, but it needs to be given reassurance and regular compassionate reminders that although it is powerful, it is not privy to the workings of the entire universe, nor does it need to be for you to be happy, free, and manifesting your divine destiny. This oracle comes to you now because the mysterious workings of higher will are at work in your life, and you will find peace and even awe as you, as you relax your mind and choose to trust now. All right, Taurus. So there it is. There is your reading for June. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you guys for the month of July. Yeah? Take care. Much love. Bye.